so a few months ago, I uploaded a Roblox GFX tutorial, which is now the second most popular video on my channel. Thank you guys for the support. However, there were multiple problems. First of all, people wanted to know how to make a banner because they had no idea how to make one. And not only that, people were having issues that I had never seen before. And the final complaint was that it didn't look as good as my profile picture. So that's why today I'm going to make a tutorial that looks much better than the previous one. So just a little heads up, this tutorial is only going to work for people who have an avatar that has a full package. So if you have an avatar that mixes multiple packages at the same time, you're going to have to go to the previous tutorial. Sorry, man. However, it still does look good. Both tutorials look quite the same, but this one has a better quality, slightly. So for this video, you are going to need to download Blender, obviously. Hey, listen, just because there's Blender doesn't mean it's going to be difficult. As long as you follow every step that I do, it should be just fine. You're also going to have to download Lightroom, just like in the previous tutorial. I made a few tweaks to it, so better download the new one that is going to be in the description. You're also going to need to download the low character plugin for Roblox Studio. And now we have one last thing that is brand new, and it's called Starter Rigs. All of the download links are in the description, just as usual. So the Blender part of the video is inspired from Roll Builder, which I'm pretty sure all of you guys know if you actually do watch GFX tutorials. And hopefully it's the last time that I make a GFX tutorial and good luck. Hope you make a great one. So the first thing we are going to do is obviously we are going to open Roblox Studio. So the most important thing is to actually have the Explorer tab at the right side of your screen. If you do not see it, it's very simple. All you have to do is to go to the top of the screen, click on view, and then click on Explorer, and then it should appear at the right side of the screen. So now we're going to spawn a model for Avatar to do that. We're going to click on plugin at the top of the screen and then find the load character plugin that you have installed. So apparently a lot of my viewers have been telling me that the load character plugin does not appear in Studio. And all I can tell you is that if you downloaded it a second time it should appear then so what we're going to do is that we're going to put our avatar this time i'm actually going to be using my avatar sorry for the ones who wanted me to use their avatar it's because my avatar has back accessories and also hat accessories which is very important for this tutorial another thing that a lot of people got confused at you're not supposed to be taking off the tick from spawn on origin you're supposed to keep it in for whatever reason many of you guys got confused at that part so just remember keep it in and with that being said you can now spawn your avatar in r6 so now you can close the low character plugin and there you go looks like you got your beautiful avatar right here so instead of posing the avatar like we did in the previous tutorial we are just simply going to directly go to explorer right click on your name and then export selection and now you can give whatever name you want to the file so that you can find it again for me personally i would rather go to the downloads page i'll call it riceman as usual so now you can just save the file and we're officially done with the roblox studio part let's go into lightroom that might sound funny, but a lot of people actually got confused on how to open Lightroom. So I'm just going to show you how to do it this time. So you need to go to your PC files and then you go to download and then you should find the Lightroom file that you have downloaded earlier. All you have to do is just double click on it. You open it just like you would open an image. And then there you go. You have Lightroom opened. Before getting started with Lightroom, we're going to have to download a brand new thing called Starter Rigs, which I'm going to show you how to. So you're going to have to go into the Starter Rigs download page, which I'm going to link in the description. All you do is go to the name of fair price and you put zero then click i want this and they're gonna ask you for your email address you just put your email address gmail outlook whatever email you use and i'm gonna put my email real quick and click on get and now there should be two download options appearing there is roblox starter rigs v1.2 and roblox ag faces you have to download both so now let's go back to lightroom now all you have to do is to go to the top left corner of the screen click on edit and make sure that lock object modes is not checked like you're seeing on my screen if it's checked all you have to do is click on it and then it unchecks let's go to edit again this time go to preferences click on it now go to the add-on section and you're gonna click on install so now all you have to do is find the file where you downloaded the starter rigs so for me it appears right here so i'm gonna click on the starter rigs and then install add-on so now all you have to do is go to the search option click on it and now search roblox and now object roblox starter rig should appear all you have to do is to check it so now you can just close it and let's get started so just like in the previous video, I'm going to show you how to move in Blender. I'm only going to show you the basics. So if you want to zoom in, zoom out like this, you got to use the wheel of the mouse, just like you would scroll on the website like YouTube. And if you want to move like this, you hold the wheel of the mouse. You click and hold the wheel and then start moving the mouse. I'm still holding the wheel and it should move like this. After this, if you want to move like this, first of all, you're going to have to hold shift and then you hold the wheel of the mouse at the same time and then you start moving and it should be moving like this. So now that you know how to move in Blender, let's get started. So let's go to start. 
starter rigs at the right side of the screen. If it does not appear for you, all I have to do is click on N and then it should appear. So now what you're going to do is that you're going to click on select rig. And for me, my avatar is a blocky rig. So let's go with the blocky rig. And as you can see, we have a beautiful fella right there. <laughs> so what you want to do first is to simply click on the head. Now let's go to the shading option. And there should be a whole list right here that might seem confusing. But if you want to know how to move it like I'm doing right now, same thing. You hold the wheel of the mouse and you move it. So the first part we want to go to is the main texture. Now what you want to do is to click on that little weird symbol, whatever that means. You click here and then you click on the folder. Now you have to go wherever you downloaded your avatar previously. When I exported my avatar from studio, I went to download. So that's where my file is going to be. So it might take like 30 minutes for you to find the texture. It does happen for me when you have too much files in it. But usually all of the texture files are called handle. So you're just going to look for handle and there you go. My file appears right here. You click on it and then you open the image. My beautiful rig has the beautiful clothing now. So now you're going to go down. You're going to go to the face texture part. You're going to click on this weird symbol. Use file from current directory and then click on the folder file. If you want to know what face your avatar is using, you're going to go to the Roblox website and just pretty much just enter your profile and then you're going to look at what face you're using. So for me, the face appears right here. I'm going to click on it and then it's called the goofball face. So, so that means that I'm going to have to search for the goofball face. So if you want to do that, open your computer files. There should be the Roblox HD faces that you have downloaded earlier. You double click on it. Again, double click on it and then now you search for goofball. I'm going to drag it directly into downloads and now let's go back into Lightroom, go to downloads and then I'm going to look for the face goofball and it should appear right here. So now I just click on it, open image and there you go. My avatar has the full clothing and face. Isn't that great? So let's go back to the layout at the top of the screen. We are officially going to import the model of our avatar that we got from Roblox Studio. So if you want to do that, go to the top left hand corner of the screen, click on file and let's go to import and they apparently added legacy wavefront OBJ which I have no idea what's the difference with wavefront OBJ but we're just going to go with the classic one. You're going to click on it. Time to find where you put your 3D file. So for me it was again in download and I called it the rice man. So it's right here. Make sure you click on the OBJ one not on the MTL. So once you click on the OBJ one, do not import it yet. Make sure that split by group is also checked and now you can import the model. So there should be your beautiful avatar right here. If you do not see those arrows, all you have to do is click on the moving tool at the left side of the screen. If your arrows appear, what you have to do is that you're going to put your avatar a little bit higher. You're going to lower it until it completely covers the hand of the rig. So once your avatar is perfectly aligned with the rig, you're going to hold G, X, and then click 5. So now your avatar has moved to the left. By the way, if you ever do a mistake, all you have to do is to click on Control Z. So now that we have moved the avatar to the left, let's just click on the arm. Just delete the parts. Delete everything except for the accessories. You select it by clicking on it, right click, and then delete. So now we have only the accessories that are remaining. Now we want to connect the accessories to the rig. There should be dark lines appearing. Just click on one of them and it should select the entire ring. Now you go to the top left hand corner of the screen. You click on object mode and then pose mode. So now you can click away to unselect it. And now we're going to connect all of the hat accessories to the head and all of the torso accessories to the torso. If you want to select multiple parts at the same time, you click on one of the hat parts and then you hold shift and you click on the other hat part. And I'm still holding shift by the way. So there should be a dark circle surrounding the neck of your avatar. So for some of you guys, it might seem literally invisible because your avatar has so much accessories. Very simple. You're going to click here at the top of the screen. You click this full circle and it should appear completely gray. It should be a lot easier to find the dark circle. The items are still selected. Hold shift and now click on this dark circle. There you go. Perfect. And now you're going to click control and then P. And now you're going to click on bone. And now according to Blender, the hats are officially matched to the head. So now we got to do the same thing, but with the torso accessories. Like I told you, you click on a random torso accessory, you hold shift and you click on the other one. This time there is no dark circle. It's that part. So what you're going to do, you hold shift, you click in the middle of this thing. If this part appears in yellow, it means you have succeeded. So same thing, control P and you click on bone. Now all of the accessories are connected to the avatar. If you want, you can just click here again to make the colors appear. And now let's select all the accessories, including the hats and back accessories. You click on the moving tool. There should be a red arrow appearing. You just move it. I'm not really a master of accuracy, but I can at least try my best. And I think that's good. All right, that's not perfect, but it looks good. So now you can click away. We're done with it. So we're officially at the toughest part, the posing part. So I'm no pro at posing. I can at least show you what I usually do. So what you want to do now is you click on the rotating tool and I'm going to select this part of the rig right here and I'm going to slightly push it forward. You click on this part again, push it slightly forward. And now you're going to click on this part and you're going to push it slightly this way. Now get to the moving tool and then push the arm a little bit high. Same thing. You can click away now, go back to the rotating tool and now select this arm and click on this part right here and it should be able to rotate this side. Go back to the 
moving tool and then push it up so now go back to the rotating tool click on the yellow ring around the head push it this side and then rotate it with the green side so what i'm going to do is completely useless but i usually do it just for the style i like to actually edit the pose of the leg so what i do is i basically just click on this part of the leg push it slightly backwards i click on the top one and i push it slightly forward and i push it to this side same thing to the other one you just unselect it click away now click on the leg and try to find the dark part that is under it you push it down push it forward and then you push it this side all right so we're officially done with the pose all we need to do now is to render but wait my bad forgot not rendering yet at the top right hand corner of the screen you should scroll down and then there should be a uh, light appearing right here you click on it and then you go to the material properties and then there should be a list right here appearing back top left right warm what i would recommend is that you keep the top and the right completely white and you just change the color of the rest so for today i'm going to be using a blue background so you're going to click on back now click on this red bar and you use your mouse to edit the color of it. I'm going to go to blue. Uh, change the left to blue. Change the warm to blue. And change the cold to blue. So, but for example, if you're using green, just change everything to green. There should be a camera icon appearing right here. You click on it. And you just move the camera just like I taught you earlier in Blender. So, you just use the wheel of the mouse. And you just zoom in, zoom out. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as the entire avatar is in it, it's just fine. So, this looks good. Click on the camera icon again. With all of that being done, there's only one last thing to do. Rendering. So, all you have to do is at the top of the screen click on render and then you gotta click on render image i'm not going to show it on video because it's going to completely kill the recording rendering takes a big part of the energy of your pc so it can take even an hour 30 minutes these rigs take a lot more time to render than the previous ones from the previous video so just click on render image i'll see you guys in a few seconds all right, so the render is finally done. So if you want to know if the render is finished, all you have to do is look at the top left-hand corner of the screen, and it should be written how much time is remaining if it's not over. If it's done, then the text should be completely still. So once it's finished, all you have to do is click on image, click on save as, and then you are basically going to name your file. Uh, I'll just call it cook because that's how most people call me on Roblox. And now you can just save the image. Congratulations, you are done with the Blender part. For the final part of the tutorial, we're going to be using a website called PhotoP. We're going to add the background to our profile picture, and we're also going to make a banner. So if you want to know how to make your own background, there has been many variations of the background. For example, some people have been using Canva, which is absolutely fine. So I'm just going to show you the way that I do it. By the way, I did not create the design. I just took it from another tutorial and replicated it multiple times for different colors. So if you really want to make your own version of the background, either you can use Canva like others did, or you can just go to the original tutorial that shows you how to make the background, which I'm going to link in the description. So now what you want to do is that you want to click on open from computer and you're going to look for the background color that you have downloaded. So for me, it is the blue background. So I'm going to look for blue. By the way, just a little reminder, it is a PSD file, not a PNG file. So with that being said, let's just open it. And then you got your beautiful profile picture right there. So what I'd like to do first is to click on shape one, copy four, and to simply just lower it like that. Because in the previous tutorial, I kind of made it a little bit too high. So I just want to lower it again. Now you're going to put the render version of your avatar in the background. So all you got to do is that you go to the top left hand corner of the screen, click on file go to open in place and then you just find the rendered picture of your avatar i'm going to use someone else's avatar just so that the tutorial isn't boring so i'm going to use this beautiful amazon mcdonald's man so it might not appear all you have to do is at the right side of the screen you can just drag your avatar at least there there you go it looks great so if you ever want to rotate or scale the image all you got to do is click on edit and then go to transform and then click on scale you can now modify the size of the image of your avatar so for me i think this should be all right now you can simply go back to your avatar right click and then click rasterize so now things should be easy all you do is double click right here and then you should have a whole list appearing on your screen so what i do first is that i click on stroke and then i click on this black box and i use my mouse to push this little circle to white and then i click ok now the next thing to do is you click on outer glow you click on this yellow box you push this thing using the mouse all the way to the right and you use a vertical bar to change the color so for me it's blue since it's a blue background you click ok and you can also change the intensity for the outer glow i like to put it to the max and finally you click on inner glow now you click on the yellow box you move this circle all the way to the right and then you use the vertical bar to change it to the color of your background now you click on okay you do whatever you want but for me i think that 40 is okay and now you can click okay all right well done now there's only one last thing to do save the image so now you can just click on file go to export as and then click on png and then you give whatever name i'll just call it the box and now you can save congratulations you got a brand new profile picture now uh, if you want to know how to make a banner let's go 
So first of all, you're going to have to download that image, which I'm also going to link in the description. And once the image is downloaded, let's go back again. You click on open from computer. Now you're going to find the banner template. You click on it and then you open it. So if you don't understand how it works, basically, it's basically the zone that everyone sees, especially on PC. And there you have the zone that people on tablet can also see and also desktop max right there. And then finally, you have the zone that people on television can see. So what you want to focus the most on is the desktop minimum of mobile, because that is the part that everyone can actually see. So now you can go to file, click on open open in place and then you click again on the render version of your avatar you open it and then you're gonna push it in front of background and it should appear right here so remember you can click on edit transform and then scale if you want to change how your avatar looks so now you're gonna open another photo p tab which has the background in it all you do is click on file export as png and you just save the blue background as the png file now you're gonna open another photo p tab this time you're going to open the png version of the background so what you gotta do is we're gonna blur the background so you're gonna click on this little drop click on the size changer and set it to the max and now we're gonna change the strength to a hundred percent and now you can just start brushing everywhere until you're satisfied with it now we can just go to file export as click on png now you have a blurred version of your background so let's go to the first tab let's go to file open in place and now let's open the blurred version of the background so now it should appear behind just push it slightly forward we're gonna change the opacity to at least 38 percent for now now select the blue background and go to edit click on transform and then scale now let's make the background cover the entire banner I I think we're good all right all right all right so i think this looks good so now what we're gonna do we're just gonna add the name of your channel in the middle of the banner so you click on the t logo right here you use whatever font you want but personally i would rather use luckiest guy you're gonna click on it you can just click on this part of the screen now it should let you insert some text so let's just invent some channel name let's just type amazon and now what you want to do is you select all of the text go to size change it to the max and change the text color to white click on the moving tool again now try to put it to the center there should be two lines touching together if you have done it properly so now you can just double click here and now you're gonna add a stroke click on stroke 18 should be fine click on the black box and now let's change the color to blue and now you can click on okay and then now you're gonna add an outer glow click on this yellow box push this thing all the way to the right and now change it to blue if you're using a blue background personally i would set the outer glow to at least 110 so now you're gonna click on inner glow click on the yellow box again push this thing all the way to the right use the vertical bar to set it to your background color personally i would just set it to 50 and now all we need to do is just get rid of the text template now select the blue background click on this triangle and set the opacity to 100 now select your avatar double click here now let's add a stroke again this time the stroke click on the blue box now let's set it to white and make sure the stroke is at least at three now let's click on outer glow and now it's already set up to blue for me so i don't have to change anything and then finally inner glow and now it looks great click on okay now all we need to do is just to save the banner no now you're gonna click on file export png and then you just save it all right well done now i don't have to show you guys how to make a banner anymore that's cool all right Get out of here. See you next time.